Hi, welcome to Books to Boardrooms with Dr. Kiran. Today we have Sara Al Dalal, the founder and the president of Emirates Health Economic Society. Uh, good morning, uh, Sara. Thanks for coming for this particular show. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Dr. Kiran, and thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, it's great to be here today and to be talking about something new, hopefully. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Sara, can you just give a little background about yourself, how you landed up in health economics? It's, it's been, a, a, I won't say a long journey, but it is a very beautiful journey. Uh, I am, my name is Dr. Sara Al-Dallam, born and raised in Dubai. Uh, a UAE national with all proud and pride in myself. Um, after I graduated from high school, I pursued my medical degree from the UAE University, a very prestigious university in, in the United Arab Emirates, located in Al Ain, and I have graduated uh, from the College of Medicine and Health Sciences with a bachelor's degree. After that, as a young doctor, uh, I went back to Dubai and I continued uh, doing what young doctors do. So I did my trainings, my initial trainings, and then I proceeded with taking my trainings uh, in uh, um, a healthcare field called the internal medicine field. And in fact, I have completed my whole five year program of training. But I was thinking, well, there is something that I'm missing about the whole thing. Uh, um, we are, uh, yes, there is a clinical part or a healthcare part. I'm looking at patients and um, I'm treating patients in the Dubai Healthcare Authority, but there are certain things that I won't say missing, but as a doctor, I felt like I need to do more. It's not only giving the patients the right kind of care, but there should be the right, the right type of services and, and set up to have these patients come and have a beautiful experience journey. I don't think anyone, anyone likes to be in a hospital or a clinic um, for whatever reason. So, um, so I started looking at how patients come to clinics, what is the flow, what are their concerns. And there was that hunger with me as, uh, what could I do more? So I tried, I went ahead and I pursued my first master's degree in healthcare administration to complement my clinical part. And when it looked at this healthcare administration part from, and, and I, I pursued it from the Royal Colleges of Surgeons in Ireland, uh, it started to give me more of an idea of how I can change certain services where at that point, uh, in the Dubai Healthcare Authority, my career also shifted to pursue that love when I, I, was, uh, um, I was shifted to being a healthcare service specialist. That didn't stop there. Administration is not only about services and having things. There is also a component that I, I still lacked. Like, yes, we can do things better but we can do it more in a more efficient manner. And how could that be? So I started looking and looking further and looking online and having a little bit of work with all the um, healthcare financing uh, uh, departments in the Dubai Health Authority, it came to my mind that there is something also missing that I'm not fitting into the puzzle that will complete the full picture which is health economics. So I pursued another uh, couple of degrees in health economics, master's degrees from the London School of Economics. And then again, when I came, when I completed my, my, uh, my or throughout completing my degrees, I felt like, where are the health economists around? They are there, but I, I, we need to be somewhere. We need to promote that. It's, it's typically in the healthcare field. It's a new field. It's just been introduced in the 1960s. But still, uh, I felt like we need to do that and promote that in the UAE. 
So thereby, I uh, initiated uh, the uh, Health Economic Society, the Emirates Health Economic Society, and it's been almost a year, and we have almost 40 members under that, and I'm so proud that I'm, I'm trying to uh, bring that kind of sense of why health economics is important, especially in these times. I know it's a very long introduction, but this is my journey, my beautiful journey in a few simple words. I think it's very, it's very interesting because I've been in the academic field, you know, we, we teach uh, managerial accounting, economics, international economics, managerial economics, and that's the reason when I came to know about you, about health economics, I think that's a pretty interesting field because we don't study health economics in a normal university degree. Uh, you study normal economics when it comes to MBA or any of the masters in business. Uh, so can you just give it a little background about uh, what is health economics? I mean, is it same as the normal economics or is there any relationship with the current economics or it's, it's completely new? Well, uh, I mean, to be very honest, there is not a, 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 a definition, a definition. But I can tell you something of that sort. It, it, can, it brings the basic principles of economics that everyone knows about, but adds a flavor when it comes to health. Because there are certain aims when it comes to health that we need to achieve. And these aims are being established for a longer time, which is improving the health of the patients, improving the health of the population. We want them to be healthy. The longer the time, the better. But coupled with that, we need to do it in a more efficient manner with whatever resources we have, whether it may be financial or non-financial. So this is the economics part, and then it gets the flavor of the health economics part, and then we merge them together. And there's this very niche basic principle that it is quite complex with healthcare. Getting people to become better over time, it's quite difficult to achieve. Uh, but with getting uh, the right resources and the, the right amount of resources in a very timely manner, this is where we need to have the economist brain on top. So economics is always about demand and supply, and it, right. it comes in pricing, right? So if the demand is more uh, and the supply is less, the price goes up for a product or service. But what I heard in health economics, it's again, the resources are scarce, you know, because you have but it is basically for the good of the nation in terms of a healthy population uh, or healthy people. That means less expenses in um, healthcare as an industry. Right. But you still need to invest. So that's the, the, the health economics role comes in how much you invest and where you invest. Should you invest in the healthy community living? Should we invest in a better treatment uh, or a, a better way of medication so that the people can be more healthy? But then there is no such thing that oh, it is going to benefit an organization or a country in terms of, okay, I'm going to get money out of it. But it got a lot of intangible other benefit. A healthy country leads to a healthy economy. Right. So, so that's where you think that health economics play a very important role that where they should invest and when the resources are limited, should they invest in, uh, like for example, development of a vaccine or development of a medicine or health infrastructure or when it comes to maybe uh, educating the people to live healthy and eat healthy so that you know their chances of disease are less so that government need to spend more money on the on the medical part of it so is, is that makes the health economics one of the most interesting topic it is this is as a nutshell if you 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 have summarized it quite nicely we do as you said it's always there is a return of investment when it comes to um, any kind of concept when it comes to the business world or the economics uh, with having pricing added to it but in health you cannot put a price to anything uh, it is very difficult to put the price or even a value to estimate it properly because there are some direct cost indirect cost uh, and where to invest and how to invest and every set of population uh, have their different demands and different needs. Kids will have, or adolescents will have a different need, uh, um, um, uh, or, and, and we can think of that as markets. Uh, again, this is what the economics thinking about, yes, I will put something in demand and supply, 
but the supply, how we can provide it and how we cannot provide it. And there are certain tools that we use as health economists to drive that. So the investment in health also is not a return of investment within two years. Actually, if you vaccinate someone now, you will reap the benefit within the next 10, 15 years. Now, it depends with the COVID vaccination. It's a different kind of setup, but we can see that even with that, there's different concepts when it comes to healthcare. You can see, as I, I told you, you can invest in older populations. You can, which I mean by older, which are our grandmothers, grandfathers, who have a different need, different demand, and different supply that would be required to that. And governments are trying to find that balance and looking at the future of this nation. We need a healthier nation, then it's a healthier overall economic situation. Um, uh, it, it is quite interesting in the last one year or so how the health economics has been shaped. Uh, one of the things that uh, we, it is quite interesting to, to see also is having a universal health coverage, having people insured under a, a certain umbrella and not only insured, uh, the, the insurance itself or the healthcare insurance itself and having patients getting through the doors of doctors on a timely manner, it is protective. And this is where health economists try to figure out with all of this data where the proper investment should be and when will the return of investment will look like and how it will look like and provide it to decision makers. It's a very fascinating area. If you look at the, the, the areas what you covered right now, so that means as a health economist, I can work for a pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. and I can predict what should I invest in what sort of medicine and how long I can reap the benefit from that medicine. Or from an, a regulatory point of view, a Ministry of Health or health authorities, in terms of what sort of health infrastructure you hear about during COVID, I think that's where it really exposed a lot of countries. Like people are waiting not enough beds or waiting time to meet a doctor for 14 days or two weeks or one week. I mean, those are all the flaws in some of the systems in some part of the world. And uh, so that means the health economics has to play a very important role to really identify what is the number of people and what sort of infrastructure you need to have, what sort of investment is needed so that you can have a better country and a nation in that particular respect, right? So that, that also plays a very important role, being a health economist. But if this is the this much of role is there for a health economist. Why is this that not a very popular uh, science still now? I mean, why is it COVID is going to open the door for that? Or I have not seen much of the universities here or across the world talking too much about health economics. You know, you talk about health, you, you study medicine in, in, a, in a normal medical college or a health science college, but health economics seems to much more interesting in that area. And it's one of the most important thing because I seen countries spending three to seven percent of the GDP for healthcare sector itself, mm -hmm. and that's again a, a typical spend. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think that what happened to health economics and why health economics is not getting that popular, mm -hmm. and now why it is getting more popular? There are a couple of things to think about it. Um, first of all, when we go into medical school or even, and I'm not saying any health-related uh, uh, graduate program. The economics part or the valuing of certain things are not ingrained to us. We are just uh, in, the, in the regular curricula, which are uh, currently academic curricula. And even as we just mentioned earlier, even in the economics or MBA, the health economics flavor has not been introduced for one reason or the other. Uh, I can give you some, some kind of assumptions why it's not. It's because it's a new field. We are still learning, we are still trying to figure out the value of being a healthy person and what nations uh, required it to be um, a value to, to that. Let's think about the pharmaceutical sector, they value certain things, the governments would value different things. So we're still exploring, it's a still a new field in healthcare, but it's a very fascinating uh, field. So this is one of the things. The other thing is, why we don't hear about it, it was not integrated in the way we deal with things uh, in a traditional setup. So with our curriculas, which are, I, I am sure with the MBA programs, you have different markets, but the healthcare markets 
are not tackled under the economic umbrella, which we are hoping to see. Uh, the best thing, are, I, I, one of the uh, advantages of the pandemic and the current situation is highla uh, highlighting how health economists do play a role, whether it was infrastructure, whether it was supporting uh, uh, newer medications, whether it was supporting uh, pharmaceutical companies, whether it was supporting even health economists, and I uh, uh, would also allocate to different businesses. So this is where things get much more interesting. So if I will drive, for example, whatever resources I have for drug development, specifically in, in a certain area, then I will be taking a little bit from the healthcare sector with patients being waiting for a line. So there is this balance that occurs. And uh, we are hoping with the initiation of these international associations of having more, uh, uh, more programs to be included in the region, uh, more and with my society to bring the basic principles of health economics and having that healthy discussions with decision makers that these are certain principles that we can apply and it could work out from now on with, uh, with the current situation. I think it's really wonderful to know what you guys are doing. I think this is one of the areas where a lot of promotion or word of mouth or branding is needed for health economics and I think your society is basically doing that. And any government would like to have a lot of uh, participation and partners. So I'm sure your society is bringing that value to the Department of Health in UAE government or the Dubai government in that particular respect. And uh, this, I'm sure, whoever is watching this particular uh, interview will, will come to know about the importance of health economics because it's a wide spectrum. Uh, everyone, and a lot of industries are needing health economics, like whether you're in the insurance sector, whether you're in a pharmaceutical sector, you're in hospitals, you're the regulatory authorities. So it's, it's a much better opportunity is available for everyone. And uh, I'm sure a lot of students going forward will be interested in looking at how the health economics is going to play a major role because I think the COVID has really exposed every country in the world. So that means the opportunities are going to be unbelievable. But having the right number of health economists and having the right number of people who can really predict and forecast things can have a better economy and countries in the world. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. You, Sarah, for coming and uh, giving a, a much enlightening uh, area of health economics. And uh, so looking forward to meet you next time when your society is giving much more to the, to, to the UAE as a society. So I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kirin, for highlighting the importance of health economics and bringing me here forward. The, just the word of mouth, as you just said, will promote that enough. Thanks again for having me here, and I would love to share with everyone our successes in the near future, inshallah, and with all of you being around us here, uh, we will be moving forward. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. You. Thanks, Thank thanks you so a lot. I, I'm sure you guys have got a very important information about health economics, so something which is completely unique and, and new to a lot of us. So I think it's a much privilege for me to have uh, Dr. Sara from the Emirates Health Economics Department itself coming and talking about health economics. Until I come up with someone new, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you.